hi guys so this is kevin academy in this video we are going to be looking at route foundation types and application we all know the purpose of foundation in structures and buildings foundation are where loads from the superstructure are transferred into the ground so a foundation is very important in building and generally in construction but before we go to the types of foundation we have let us discuss about the factors that affect the different choice of foundation because technically we have a lot and lot and lot of foundations. So the four major factors that affect the choice of foundation are the magnitude of the load you want to apply. That is, depending on the kind of load that is coming from the superstructure. In a building of three-story building cannot be compared to the load that will be obtained from a building of one story building i hope you get so that will affect the type of foundation you are going to select then the second one is the soil bearing capacity this depends on the nature of the soil then we also have the level of settlement then we have the last one the proximity of adjacent structures this also affects the type of foundation or the choice of foundation for a particular structure so the first factor which is the magnitude of the load that is applied can actually be obtained from structural analysis of the building from there you know the magnitude of load to apply on your foundation then the soil bearing capacity and the level of settlement can actually be obtained from geotechnical investigation of the soil so when investigation is being carried out then a geotechnical engineer is going to provide a report from the reports, you are going to obtain the soil bearing capacity or the pressure on the ground based on the depth or along the depth of the ground. So the level of settlement is also going to be included in the report. Moving forward from here, let us discuss the various types of foundations that we have. But before we discuss that, if this is your first time on this channel, hit that subscribe button and like this video now, now, now. Generally in construction, we have two major types of foundation. We have the shallow foundation. We also have the deep foundation. So this definition is actually based on the names of them. So when you say a foundation is shallow, it means the depth of the foundation is not much. It's not significantly much compared to the size of the foundation. But when the foundation is deep, then you know we are going deep down into the soil so the various type of shallow foundation we have a strip foundation pad foundation we all know this and we have the raft foundation which is the focal point of this video then let us talk about the different kind of deep foundations we have we have the pad, we have the casings and we also have the shaft foundation we have other types of deep foundation but just to show you the common ones so let us look at a picture of a typical raft foundation in construction site so this is a typical raft foundation construction of a typical raft foundation you have the reinforcement laid on the ground then you now pour the concrete so this actually depends because we have various types of raft foundation as well so let us look at the various types of raft foundation I hope you have subscribed to this channel. Thank you. So the first of them is the solid slab raft. This is just simple as just saying that a raft, a flat slab. The principle here is that you are converting the load of the superstructure and subjecting it to a solid slab, to a slab that is not supported or assisted with any beam, just a normal slab. And that slab is going to spread that load to the ground we also have the solid slab with beams this is just addition of beams then we have the cellular raft let's now look at each of them one by one discuss their uses and application so we have the solid slab raft the configuration of this is so simple you have a flat slab on laid on the ground then you have the columns that are taking the load from the superstructures. So the flat slab here is the foundation, which is the raft. So it will take that load from the column and spread it to the ground. 
So this kind of foundation is mostly useful when you have a regular distance between the columns. Also, when the load on the columns are evenly distributed, that is the load on the columns, the difference between them is not much. So this kind of foundation is majorly used when we, for light structures. You can use it for heavy structures. And what is the reason why? The reason is simple. In an heavy structure, the load coming from the column onto the foundation will be so much that at the end of the day, the depth of your slab to take that load will be as much as 1 meter 600 millimeters. And providing this will be uneconomical to construct. So that is why it is only limited to lightweight structure. Let's move to the second part, which is the slab with beams. This is also just like the first one, but the only difference here is that you now have a beam. The beam are not taking the load, actually. They are just trying to reduce the effective depth of the slab. So in that case, the depth of the slab will be so much smaller because the beam will be acting as a stiffener for the slab. So in that case, you have a smaller depth of beam. So the configuration is such that you have beam, column, and slab. But the orientation of the beam and slab, the orientation between the column and the, the beam and the slab actually depends on the method of construction. We have two methods of construction that are generally used to execute a kind of project of beam slab raft foundation. So the first of them is, or before we go into that, let us talk about the where we can use this kind of raft foundation slab with beams. The first of them is when we have uneven distributed distribution of load. When the load is not evenly distributed amongst the columns, then using a slab with beams is going to be very helpful in that kind of situation. Then this kind of foundation is used for medium structures. Medium structures where the soil is very soft. So where the soil is very soft, this kind of foundation will work perfectly. But in some other cases, in some cases where we have heavier load and the soil condition is good, then you can provide this kind of foundation. So let us look at the orientation of slab with beams. So we have two major kinds of orientation. You have the first one where you have your slab on the top. Then you have your beam going down from the top of the slab to the favorable depth as prescribed by the geotechnical report. So this kind of alignment is called a downstand alignment. When the top of your beam and the top of your raft slab are in alignment. So in that kind of situation is a downstand alignment. Then we have the second type of orientation. This one is the second type is the one that I showed you in the previous picture, where you have the bottom part of your raft slab is in alignment with the bottom part of the beam. So the beam is raised up to receive the column. So this kind of alignment is called the upstand alignment. The downstand alignment is much more economical to construct compared to the upstand alignment. And the reason is because in case of the upstand alignment, you need to provide an oversight concrete for the ground slab because the, the, the raft slab is going to be placed deep down to the depth of the foundation prescribed from the geotechnical report. But for the downstand alignment, the raft slab is going to be serving two purposes. It's going to be acting as the foundation for the structure. Then it's also going to be acting as an oversight concrete to serve as the ground floor for the building. So now you know the kind of orientation between the beam and slab. This is actually depends on the construction method to be used. Then we have a typical example of this. This is a, the first one here is a downstand alignment where you have, you can see that the beam is shooting out from the slab a little bit. Just looking at the picture on the left hand side. Then on the right hand side, you can see that the top of the beam and the slab are in alignment. So that is an upstand alignment of beam slab raft foundation. Let's now move to the last type of foundation, which is the cellular raft. The cellular raft foundation comprises of two concrete slabs that are interlocked together using a raft beam. So you can see it actually forms something like a box shape. 
So you have the upper slab and the lower slab connected together with a raft beam. So where do we actually use this kind of raft foundation? They are usually used where we have, where the ground is likely to settle. So in that kind of situation, a cellular raft is highly recommended. Or when you have heavier load from the superstructures, then you can use a cellular raft foundation. So generally, let us discuss the various application of raft foundation. So I'm just going to be giving you two practical applications where you can apply raft foundation. And this can actually be derived from what I've been talking about right from the beginning of this video. So the first of them is for lightly loaded structures where the ground is soft and then you need to spread the load. So in that kind of situation, you want to spread the load to much more area as much as possible. Then you can provide the raft foundation. So the raft foundation is going to be serving as a bridge between the weaker areas and the areas that are a little bit better. So you can say when your soil capacity is between 50 to 75, depending on the area and also depend on the load, I've already explained the factors that affect it, then you can provide a raft foundation. Then the second application is when you have heavier structures where the ground condition is, there's no likely to be any significant differential settlement. According to the geotechnical guys, there is a, a limit or allowable settlement. So when you know that your settlement will not exceed that limit, then you can, the structures can be heavy in that kind of situation. And you know, due to the load, the settlement will not exceed that significant limit Then you can provide a raft foundation. Then another thing to take note is, economically, when you notice that providing a path foundation, at the end of the day, when you provide a path foundation, your path footing is covering about 50% of the bl blueprint of the building. Then it's no, it's no more economical to provide a path foundation. So in that case, it is recommended that you provide a raft foundation. So that is all I want to discuss with you about raft foundation in this video. For those of you that are highly interested in design, that you want to know how to actually design raft foundation i actually have a website chevdinacademy.com you can go on our website then you come to all courses you see list of all the courses we have you will notice that we have a course on raft foundation raft foundation with protar structure so what we do in this course is we design a five suspended floor building then we provide the raft foundation so we showed you all you need to know about raft foundation you see what you are going to learn about the course you learn the various you learn why we provide raft foundation and there are various type you learn how to troubleshoot members why you design it then you also learn how to design raft foundation on proto structures you learn the various type of raft that you can actually model on proto structure software then you also understand the professional way of detailing raft foundation so you can see the uh content then, so this course is about four hours long. You have le lesson notes and you also have certificate of completion at the end of this course. So if you're highly interested in learning, understanding how RAT Foundation is designed, go to the link in the description of this video. You are going to see a link that will take you to this page that you can get here, get this course and you start learning it. Thank you. See you in the next one.